This story is about Brock Turner, a sexual predator who raped a girl on January 18th, 2015 on the Stanford University campus and basically got away with it. If you like hearing stories about people who suck, then like and subscribe. Brock Allen Turner was born on August 1st, 1995 in Dayton, Ohio. His father is Dan Turner, a civilian contractor for the United States Air Force. His mother is Carlene Turner, a nurse. Brock was an avid swimmer at an early age and would often win swimming competitions. In high school, Turner began experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Later on, police would find photos and messages on Turner's cell phone that indicated extensive drug use, including LSD, ecstasy, marijuana, and excessive alcohol. Turner was arrested in 2014 for possession of alcohol while under legal age. On January 18, 2015, when he was 19 years old, Turner attended a party at Kappa Alpha Fraternity. It was there that he met his future victim, Chanel Miller. When he saw her, he immediately approached her and tried to kiss her. He was rejected, but followed her around and tried to kiss her again, but was rejected again. As the night progressed, the party got bigger and louder until both Turner and Miller disappeared from the party. Later that night, Turner was caught in the act of raping Miller behind a dumpster. He was caught by two Swedish graduate students named Peter Lars Johnson and Carl Frederick Arndt, who happened to be passing by. When they saw Turner, he was on top of an unconscious woman whose dress had been pulled up to expose her genitals. Her underwear and cell phone were dropped beside her. Turner was thrusting his hips into the unconscious woman. When Johnson and Arndt saw this, they confronted Turner by shouting, What are you doing? She's unconscious. This surprised Turner and he fled the scene. Arndt tried to help the unconscious Miller while Johnson chased after Turner. Turner only got about 75 feet away from the dumpster when he was caught and pinned to the ground. According to witnesses, Turner was smiling and laughing the entire time. According to a deputy sheriff, the victim was unconscious at the scene. When she was brought to the hospital, she did not respond to shouting and being shaken by the shoulders. She regained consciousness at 4.15 a.m. She had pine needles in her hair and on her body and dry blood on her hands and elbows. She did not recall being alone with Turner and she did not consent to any sexual activity. She had abrasions and reddening on her skin. A rape test was conducted and found that she had experienced significant trauma and penetrating trauma. Turner said that he met Miller at a party and they drank beer, danced, and kissed. He also said that everything that happened with Miller was consensual. Turner withdrew from Stanford after he raped Miller so that he would not have to face disciplinary proceedings. Two days after Turner's arrest, Stanford announced that he was banned from ever setting foot on campus again. Turner wanted to go to the Olympics, but USA Swimming stated that they had a zero-tolerance policy for sexual misconduct and imposed a lifetime ban on Turner, ending his dreams of going to the Olympics. Turner was found guilty of three felonies, assault with intent to rape an intoxicated woman, sexually penetrating an intoxicated person with a foreign object, and sexually penetrating an unconscious person with a foreign object. Before sentencing, Turner's father wrote a letter to the judge calling the rape 20 minutes of action that should not have a steep punishment and also tried to make Brock look like a victim because he no longer enjoys eating steak. Turner's parents also went on Facebook and asked for money for a legal support fund to help pay the mounting legal cost for their son. Prosecutors wanted a six-year prison sentence. Judge Aaron Persky sentenced Turner to just six months in the Santa Clara County Jail. Turner only spent three months in jail and was released. He became a registered sex offender and was obligated to go to a sex offender rehab program. This light punishment sparked a public outcry. Petitions to recall Judge Persky gathered over a million signatures. Judge Persky was eventually removed. At the time, he was the first judge to be recalled by voters in the United States since 1977. When the trial started, Miller was referred to as Emily Doe to protect her identity. She later decided to reveal her identity to the public. In an interview, she said that remaining anonymous kept her from acknowledging the pain she went through, which inhibited her from acknowledging the growth she went through after the attack. She has been on numerous interviews, including interviews with Oprah, Trevor Noah, and 60 Minutes. She wrote a book called Know My Name, a memoir, where she writes about her experience being sexually assaulted. She is also an artist who has painted a mural in the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. At the time of this video, Turner lives with his parents in Sugar Creek Township, Ohio. He works for a cooling technology company. He still goes to bars, but a network of women using social media platforms such as Facebook and TikTok are warning women about him. 
One Facebook post stated that he is frequenting bars in the area. Do not let him leave with an intoxicated woman. Inform the women of who he is. Inform the bartender and bouncers. Brock Turner does not belong in public. That's the end of the video. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. It only takes two seconds and it would really help me out. Feel free to check out the other videos on my channel. Leave a comment below if you think the punishment was too light.